When the law fails to serve justice, one can buy justice. Underground groups offer assassinations at reasonable prices, but they only take on missions that they agree would serve justice. This is a story of Teshu Fujioka, a doctor by day, a hired assassin by night. It was a warm spring evening when Teshu was ordered to murder Nasu and Echigoya. Both were guilty of kidnapping village girls and selling them as slaves to neighboring states. The families of the daughters felt that the officials would not punish Nasu because he was a high-ranking statesman. Both Nasu and Echigoya must be killed, not just one of them.
Hey, it's Goya. Give my regards to your old man. Where is Nasu? We think he's in the main house. Got it. Tell the boss I'll be done within the hour. Understood. Then you sell the girls into slavery and grow rich from your disgusting trade. How did you get here? What the?
Damn it! Who was that? One of Goda's ninjas, my friend. You've been watching, boss? Zenosuke Otou. His mild-mannered appearance conceals his true identity. Leader of the underground organization Muzen that employs Teshu. Well, you saw it. Now we won't be able to collect for this contract. Never mind that ninja, Teshu. Don't ever cross swords with the Azuma. Nasu was killed by another assassin. This truly bothered Teshu. He could not sleep well that night. Teshu's curiosity regarding Goda's ninjas escalated because Zenosuke kept telling him to forget about it since crossing swords with the Azuma was the same as suicide. But Teshu was still angry that he could not collect his fee because Rikimaru got to his target first. Ignoring Zenosuke's advice, Teshu sneaks into Goda's castle to find Rikimaru and prove to himself that he is the better assassin. I need a snack. Thank <laughs> you. 
This room. So me fine. I came here looking for you, ninja. Why did you stop? To light a candle is to cast a shadow. You stopped first. I wasn't trying to kill you. Just wanted to make a point. But if we meet again, one of us will die. Six months after Teshu's failure to kill Nasu, Teshu takes on a new order for the murder of Ganda, the head of a new religious cult that has taken over the Buddha temple on the border of Goda's realm. Ganda was guilty for taking part in the plan to sell village girls to neighboring states as slaves, but he slipped through the legal cracks because of his religious profession.
Teshu kills Ganda, and he must now rendezvous with Senkichi by the waterfalls near the bottom of the Buddha Temple's garden.
right time. <laughs>
where is he? <laughs> well, well. What have we here? What? Nein. You're coming with us. We need to talk. For Teshu, it was a big surprise to see Jinnai, a former member of Muzen, the same underground organization that Teshu belonged to. When Teshu awoke, he was in a prison cell. All of his tools for his midnight job were confiscated. Teshu must get his tools and escape. Let me out of here! Yes, of course. If you take a job for me. Job? What job? Terminate Zenoski. The boss? Well, what do you say? You know I can't do that. Fine. Then you can stay in there. Until you... You rot. bastard! Let me out of here! Hey! <laughs> Jinai always was sloppy. Ah, back in business. No sense in sticking around. Now let's see what they've done with my tools.
Oh! 
shiver went down Teshu's spine. It was intuition, a gut feeling that something truly bad was about to happen. Teshu hated himself for feeling these things in advance. Teshu must hurry to the house in the cemetery because Senkichi would be waiting for him there to hand him his payment for his services.
master sure likes his money.
what?
damn it! Senkichi was dead. Teshu knew that it had to be Jinai, because Jinai was the only one who knew about the secret handoff point for payment. Zenosuke would know what to do. Teshu rushes to the Ronin village to meet with Zenosuke. The town was infested with Jinai's men. you. I have a job for you, if you are willing. There is no client. You would be working for me. You want me to take out Jinnai, right? He and his thugs are trying to destroy this city. They said I was in their way and tried to kill me. Were you hurt? Teshu, don't be stupid. I am Zenosuke Otohu. I would never be injured by common criminals. Sorry. It was a stupid question. This will be the last job, Teshu. I'll be... retiring. I understand. I was thinking of moving on myself. Good. Very well, then. So long, boss. Take care of yourself, Teshu.
Captain.
Let's get this over with. You chose not to be on my side. Once I take on a job, I always see it through to the end. Then there's nothing more to say. Isn't it about time you showed yourself, suck you? So, you knew. Ukyo lays the trap, but Sakyo does the killing. Hell, I bet your targets never even knew there were two of you. Until it was too late. Ah, the good old days. But I'm done taking orders. It's time the world learned to fear the name Jinai Sakyo. <laughs> I won't be needing this any longer. There is still time. If you hurry, you can catch your brother on his way to hell. Sakyo. So have you. This place will blow up any minute now. Oh, that's good. That's real. Good. Sakyo, I'm sending some friends to join you.
a needle to the neck. If we meet again, one of us will die. Well, now we're even. When the law fails to serve justice, one can buy justice. Time will only tell if the flaws of legal systems will ever be fixed. But in the past, murder for hire was a profitable but dangerous underground business that filled in the holes of the law.